Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and you're joining me for another bolt action painting tutorial. This time I'll be showing you how to paint the M42 paratrooper uniform you use around D-Day and I'll be using the Lieutenant Spears miniature and the Army Painter range of paints to do so. Before you go ahead and paint your miniature, the first thing you'll need to do is to prime it. And for this I've used a grey spray primer. The reason for this is because grey works excellent on these kind of miniatures where you've got a lot of mid-tones. Now once you've finished priming, the first area of the miniature we want to paint will be the jacket and the trousers. Now painting all of these areas, first of all with Monster Brown, in order to get that light khaki colour that we're looking for in this uniform. Now as with all of the base colours that I'll be applying in this tutorial, I would recommend creating a mixture of two parts paint to one part water, and then applying at least two thin down coats of this over the miniature, allowing the first layer to dry thoroughly before doing so. This will give you the best coverage across the miniature possible. With the base coat completed, we now have a very flat looking miniature. We want to really bring out some of the detail in this particular miniature by applying some highlights of Banshee Brown. Now when applying highlights, all you need to do is just put a small amount of watered down paint on the tip of your brush, again roughly two parts paint to one part water should suffice, and using the small amount of paint just lightly drag it across the raised folds and edges of the miniature. This lighter colour paint will contrast nicely with the darker colour paint that you should still have in the recesses and really enhance the detailing that we have across the miniature. If you were to look at some pictures of the M42 uniform, you will notice it has a slightly greenish tinge to this. And we're going to be recreating this on this miniature by applying a wash of military shader. Now applying this straight out of the pot will be much too strong, so I'd recommend creating a mixture of one part water to one part shader and then applying this across all of the areas that we've painted in the previous steps. This will pull into the recesses, enhancing the shading, but also staining the surface of the miniature itself, giving it a slightly greenish color. With the jacket and trousers completed, the next step is to start tackling the webbing. And for this I'll be using a Banshee Brown again, but I'll be applying this as a base coat this time. Now as some of these areas can be quite thin and fiddly, I'd recommend using a smaller brush for these areas and just using a very small amount of paint on the tip of your brush. For this next step, we'll be applying a wash of soft tone ink across the webbing we painted in the previous steps. This will not only pull into those recesses, bringing out the detail, it'll also darken the colour of the Banshee Brown slightly as well. To finish off the webbing, I'll be applying a highlight of drape tooth across the areas we've painted in the previous steps. Again, just use a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush, focus around some of the edges and upper sections of the webbing, and just create a nice contrast between the lighter and darker areas of the miniature. With the webbing completed, we can now move on to painting some of the green areas of the miniature. Now, this includes the helmet, any grenades, and also the elbow and knee patches. Now for all these steps, I'll be using Cultus Robe and following the same steps of base layers as I've discussed previously. Now if you decide to paint the elbow and knee patches, you may have to do this freehand. Now simply just paint a square over both the knees and the elbows, being very careful to keep those lines as straight as possible. With the base coat of Cultus Robe completed, the next step is to again apply a wash over these green areas. And for this, I'll once again be using Military Shader. Now unlike our previous application, you shouldn't need to water this down much because we want to keep it as strong as possible as it's being applied over quite a dark green area. The final step in painting the green areas is to apply a highlight and dry brush of elf green. To the knee patches and grenades, I will be applying the highlight, but instead of using a highlight on the helmet, I'll instead be dry brushing it. If you're unaware of what dry brushing is, it means applying a small amount of paint to the tip of your brush, removing most of the excess onto a tissue or a piece of paper, and lightly dragging it across the surface to bring out some of the detail available. After finishing the previous step, you can also see that I've painted some of the fabric on the helmet, and to paint these areas, I've simply recreated the steps of painting the webbing and the jacket from previous steps. With the helmet completed, you can now move on to painting the gloves. Now the gloves were a leather tan color, so we want to recreate this and I'll be using a base coat of desert yellow. After applying the base coat of desert yellow to the gloves, the next step is to apply a wash of soft tone ink. Again, make sure this wash pulls into all those recesses around the hands and fingers. The final step in painting the gloves is to apply a highlight of Troll Claws. Now for this I'll be focusing it around the knuckles and the fingers on the hand. This will just really help to bring out the detailing that we have around these areas. In this next step we'll be painting a number of different areas. This includes the boots, the wooden weapon stocks and also the chin strap as well. Now all of these areas will be painted with fur brown to give us that reddish brown wood and leather effect. Following the base coat, we now want to apply a wash of light tone ink across these leather and wood areas. 
Now light tone ink is a perfect choice for this step because it still has this reddish brown color so it won't detract from the reddishness that we've already tried to achieve with the base coat but it'll still pull into those recesses and bring out the details. After allowing the wash to thoroughly dry, the next step is to apply another highlight using Troll Claws. This time, however, I'll be focusing the highlight around the seams on the boots and also on the top edges of the weapon stock as well. Just remember to use a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush and lightly drag it across these edges. The next step in painting our paratrooper will see us painting any wooden areas such as the handle on the entrenching tool. Now we're starting off with a base coat of leather brown. With the base coat completed, the next step is to apply a highlight using Monster Brown. Now for this time we want to leave the leather brown visible on the underside of the handle and also around the areas where the handle intersects with the rest of the webbing. The next area of the paratrooper that we'll be painting will be the skin and we will start off with a base coat of tanned flesh. Now when applying this make sure you don't overspill onto the areas of the miniature we've already painted as some of these skin areas can be quite tricky to reach with your paintbrush. Once you have achieved a nice and smooth base coat, the next step is to apply some highlights using Barbarian Flesh. Now with these highlights, we want to just apply a very small amount of paint to the areas which are more prominent on the face, such as the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, and also around the lips and chin. The final step in painting the skin is to apply a layer of flesh wash. Now I'd recommend mixing this down into one part ink to one part water, as we don't want to be overpowering too much at this stage. When applied, this wash will pull into the recesses and help to blend in the highlight with the base coat. The final area of the miniature that I'll be painting will be the metallic area, specifically those on the weapon. Now I want to get a dark metal colour, so I'll be starting off with a base coat of matte black. In this case, I'm painting the majority of the Thompson, apart from the wooden areas that we painted in the previous step. To finish off the metal areas of the miniature, I'll now be applying a highlight of gun metal. As with our previous highlights, make sure you just use a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush, gently dragging it across the edges. As well as painting the metal parts of the weapon, you can also use gun metal to pick out any buckles or buttons across the miniature. And here we have the completed Lieutenant Spears, who you can see I've also based. The Lieutenant Spears miniature used in this tutorial was received when I spent over £50 on the Warlord Games web store and I believe this is a limited offer so if you want to check it out I'll include a link in the description below to the Warlord website where you can pick one of these Lieutenant Spears miniatures up for yourself. If you enjoyed this tutorial please do let me know in the comments below as well as subscribing to be kept up to date with all of my future content. If you are interested in seeing the projects that I'm currently working on there are links to both my Facebook and Instagram pages in the description. Additionally, if you'd like to support me in making future content, including these tutorials, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really help me in producing future content. And I'll include a link to my Patreon page in the description below. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.